Hello, everyone. I'm Gerald Combs. I'm the creator of Wireshark, and with me here today is Roland Knoll, one of the other Wireshark developers. And we're going to talk about some of the features that are coming up in Wireshark 4.0. Uh, there are a lot of things that are going to happen with 4.0, and uh, uh, the the release notes are, are extensive. I mean, they're 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 pretty lengthy, and uh, we aren't going to be able to cover everything here today. But uh, if you do want to see what's coming up in Wireshark, we, we have a link to the release notes that you can read through, and, and I encourage you to do that. If you are one of those people that skips over the release notes with each major release, um, maybe don't do that this time around, because there is a lot of important stuff coming up in 4.0. And having said that, uh, let's uh, talk about some of those things, Roland. Well, one of the things uh, that will come up is, uh, as this is a major re release, we're going to take our time to drop support for some stuff. Uh, the main motivation behind this is to make it easier for us to keep developing the current code base. We are over 3 million lines of code, depending on how you count it. And we have uh, far beyond 2,000 protocols. And so therefore, whenever we are able to drop certain uh, stuff to support, it's making it a lot easier for us to keep maintaining the program. So one of the things we're dropping is 32-bit Windows. 32-bit Windows is still going to be supported with Wireshark 3.6 and Wireshark 3.6 versions down the road. Uh, and those will be around for a few years. But uh, coming up with 4.0, we're only supporting 64-bit. Most effect will be on legacy systems. So if you're not yet on a 64-bit Windows system, then you won't be able to move to 4.0. But 3.6 is pretty on par with the current development cycle and also has a lot of the protocol stuff in it, which, which we already have for 4.0. So you should be set. Another big thing is uh, we switched the graphics framework. And Gerald, why don't you want to talk about the ramifications of that? Sure. Um, the graphics library that we use that lets Wireshark work the same way on different platforms is called Qt or Qt. And the major version of Qt uh, increased recently. Well, not recently, but it's been a while. But they, they, the, the, the people who produce Qt, the Qt company, um, increased the major version of, of Qt from 5 to 6. And uh, we recently added support for, for the latest framework, Qt 6. And uh, that's what we're going to be shipping with uh, the Intel and the Mac OS installers. Uh, this provides extra functionality, and it cleans up the API, which makes things a little bit easier for us on the development side. But um, it also is something to be aware of if you're building Wireshark on, on your own, or if you um, say are shipping Wireshark with a Linux distribution, you should uh, um, probably upgrade as Qt6 as well. One more thing that comes also with Qt6 is the fact that on macOS, uh, this means that the minimum version we have to support is 10.14. 10 uh, this is due to a requirement of Qt6. And be aware that we're currently building with Qt6.2. Um, there are newer versions of Qt6, but they have additional dependencies. Uh, and if you run into one of those with the development version, that's why we're sticking to 6.2. Wireshark 3.6 is still sticking with Qt5. And for that, the, it's using 5.15. Uh, and because of that, we still have a dependency on macOS, which is 10.13 but you can use it going forward as well. One other thing we did with Wireshark uh, 4.0 was we cleaned up interfaces uh, a little bit. So throughout the program, uh, when you're very familiar with certain dialogues, certain interfaces, you're going to see that they have to been updated a little bit uh, graphics-wise to be a little bit more user-friendly, to be, uh, be a little bit more on the nose what they actually do. Um, and two things uh, that will come across your desk uh, right away after you start the program are actually on the main screen. And this is also one of the main focuses we had uh, with Wireshark 4.0 to make it easier for new users, to make it easier to adapt. So one thing you notice is that in the capture file, uh, list down below where all the interface listed, uh, in the past, you had a lot of interfaces which have just horizontal lines, meaning there are no packets currently coming on in this interface. 
And so what we changed here is that the active interfaces are staying on top so that you always know which interfaces actually receive packets on your system. And this makes it especially easy when you, for my instance here, I'm running on an Apple Silicon machine and you see we have a lot of default interfaces on this machine. And it makes it much easier to detect on which interfaces you can actually capture because there is something going on there. Together with that, we also changed something else. Uh, for the longest time, Wireshark had a default layout arrangement where you had the packet list on top, then you had the packet detail and the bytes view. But for Wireshark 4.0, the detail view has changed and some would say it has changed to the detail view. Many people configure automatically when they start with a fresh installation, which means that the packet list is now on top and the packet detail and the byte view share the space underneath. Uh, this is much more on par with how most users experience Wireshark, how also most uh, publications use Wireshark for pictures and stuff. And so this is now the default screen. You can always go back by changing the layout in the preference section to have the old default screen and, st and save it for yourself. But when you have a fresh installation, this is how it is done. One huge thing with Wireshark, uh, which we did, was the display filters, chilled. And I have a, a capture file that called the Ultimate PCAP, which was uh, created by Johannes Weber, and it has a whole bunch of different protocols in it. And we'll share a link to that as well, because it's uh, if you need practice or if you're just interested in protocol analysis, you can uh, find a lot of different protocols in here. One of the first things to show off with uh, regards to the new display filter syntax is that you can access fields by, by a layer number. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of protocols have multiple occurrences of, of a particular display filter field in them. like. Uh, the, the big one would, would be ip.adder, which it has, which corresponds to both the source and the destination address, or tcp.port, which is you know, is an alias for both the, the source and destination port. If I go ahead and filter this down to GRE, we can look at the GRE protocol, and we notice in here that we have multiple IP. Well, here, let me click on this one, actually. It's more, more interesting. Okay, we have you know, Ethernet, uh, which is carrying IP, which is carrying GRE, which is carrying uh, IP again, which is carrying ICMP, which um, if I come click down here to, uh, to an ICMP error, we have yet another uh, IP header. So um, in this packet that I just clicked on, we have, let's count them, one, two, three IP headers. And uh, one of the you know, problems that you run into is the ability to filter on a specific uh, instance of, say, IP.source in a packet if you have multiple headers like this. If you have, say, tunneling, or you know, which, which is what we have here, or some sort of error message which has an IP header, which is also what we have here. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of showing off both of those uh, instances here. Uh, what I can do now is, say, IP. say number two, let's just say ip.source. I can filter on those. Uh, what I'm doing here is filtering on anything with GRE and anything where the second occurrence of the IP source address is 172.23.11.56. Um, I think a lot of people are going to find this useful because this is a, a feature that, that people have been asking about for a long time. You know, th this is definitely something to be aware of uh, when you're using Wireshark 4. Another thing that you can do now is apply arithmetic to uh, fields in the packets. So you can say, Um, this is just something I made up, but uh, this finds any packet where the payload length is a multiple of 512. I, I don't know if you're going to find this as useful, but it's uh, um, something definitely to be aware of. You know, this is kind of one of those neat little corner case things that you can now do with display filters. All right, another thing that you can do with display filters in Wireshark 4.0 and later is match the last few bytes of a packet. And the way you do that is 
suppose you want to match something in the TCP and TCP payload. Whoops, can't type today. Uh, if you say wanted to match the very beginning of a packet, you could say TCP payload zero colon two. You could do that, uh, but that, you know, that that of course is useful, but it shows off something that you you couldn't do before, which is that you can't before 4.0 you couldn't really match the last two, few bytes in a packet, and you can now. And the way that you do that is uh, use a, ne a negative number for the offset. Um, what this is correction is saying is, you know, take the, the bytes in the TCP payload, and starting at the very first byte, you know, position zero, and look at the next two bytes. You know, look at those two bytes starting at position zero, and match them against uh, the, the filter zero, zero, colon zero, zero. You know, so just make sure that those two bytes are zero. Uh, if you wanted to match the very end of the packet, you could say, you could put in a negative number for this offset, or, or for it to start. And what that says is, instead of starting at the be beginning of the packet, go to the very end of the packet and back up two bytes. And then for the last two bytes in the packet, make sure that uh, they are both zero. And if I hit enter here, we can match against that. I can click on you know, the TCP Uh, packet here and see that uh, we can see that the last two bytes in that per in, in that packet are, are zeros. The next thing I think w was the comma separation. I mean, the thing the thing here is just to be aware that in the past it was able it was useful to just enter the values without a comma in between the curly brackets, and now the comma is required. Um, the reason why we mentioned this is because a lot of documentation out there, a lot of Books actually uh, don't use the commas because it was just easier to write, and they put two, four, eight, ten uh, in it, and this no longer works. So if you get now red, update your filters. If you get now red lines underneath for just having the comma. The thing is, and this comma stuff shows it. The thing is, we did a lot of stuff that is not as flashy, but it solves a lot, a lot of underlying issues. And the comma, for instance, was done to make the parser work easier and have an easier time figuring out what to match against. Because in the past, we have to had to have extra parsing steps for, for the elements without the commas, and there was different parser uh, grammar and, and algorithms in between, and syntax especially. And so this is one of the things we did. The same goes for, for installation. Uh, as Gerald already mentioned, uh, please really do take a look at our release notes. One of the major things you come across uh, when you install the new Windows version is that we updated the NPCAP version, for instance, to 170, uh, which will require you to install the network driver in a lot of uh, company environments. This is going to be an issue. Um, the reason why we put it to 170 is there are a lot of speed improvements for users. Um, be aware that there are certain scenarios out there that may have issues with that version, and we're monitoring that. Um, but that was the main consideration, that it's an improvement for the users. Um, as a last step, I just want to show you, or give you a, a quick overview over the release notes, um, as we put the link in it as well. Uh, as you see, they're quite extensive. Don't be sc uh, scared about that. Um, they're just comprehensive to be able to, to determine a lot of stuff which we didn't had in that much detail in before. For instance, we now list every version, change it. Uh, we also list the considerations for the Qt version and stuff like NPCAP 1.70. Scrolling down to the release notes, uh, I noticed that uh, something that we should probably mention really quickly is that uh, if you have to convert uh, hex dumps uh, of captures uh, because some equipment you know, doesn't give you PCAPs, it just gives you hex dumps. That should be a lot more easier and more consistent now with 4.0. Uh, you, you, you have two ways of converting hex dumps to PCAPs. You can use the command line utility called text to PCAP, or you can use the import from hex dump feature in the Wireshark main UI. And prior to 4.0, uh, both of those bits of code were kind of, they didn't share the same code base and they operated differently and um, it was sometimes hard to keep track of, you know, which portion could do, you know, had a certain feature that you needed. And, and uh, one of the cool things about 4.0 is that that code has been 
combined and now everything's you know both of those support the same feature set and so if you do need to import hex dumps and convert them to pcaps you should you know people like i said to do that a lot more consistently and uh, um hopefully a lot more easily that's true also uh, uh, we we had an adaption where we for instance we changed some command line switches for edit cap merge cap we just made sure that the uh, command line interfaces are more consistent yeah. throughout the tool set. And one of those things was actually something that was requested about XCAP. XCAP is the tool we have to use external capture programs like SSH DAMP or Cisco DAMP to capture remotely, for instance. And one of the things you can now do is provide passwords uh, on the command line. So you can use an XCAP utility, for instance, in a T-Shark command line to capture stuff from a Cisco switch uh, and use it in the command line tool as well. And you can now also uh, use empty strings and stuff like that. So it's it's a lot of small stuff, but all together, it adds up to a really big release. Um, also, we have, again, quite a few protocols which we added. For instance, the SSH file transfer protocol and other stuff, USB attached to SKZ. But one of the things I also wanted to just shout out is that we fully support Quick. Uh, we were actually or the, the Wireshark dissector for Quick was actually quite involved in the development of the protocol. There, there are rumors that the protocol was developed together with the dissector and then matched against the stack implementations. Um, but yeah, so we have full support for Quick as well already. We had in 3.6, there is some support, but for the, for the released version of Quick, we have the support as well. Uh, and together for a lot of other protocols, we usually don't list the updated protocols because pretty much every protocol was updated. Yeah, we have um, just just an honor, honorary mention. If you had issues tracking your Quake 2 server session and not enumerating the ports correctly, this has now finally been fixed for 4.0. And I looked it up. I think the last server went offline about 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've got to put the release notes uh, together with the link to the Ultimate PCAP also in the description of the video for you guys to check out. I would just point out two more things. Uh, one is if you have questions regarding 4.0, uh, we now have a Discord server, which you can find links to uh, online. Sharkfest. Um, and as it says, if you want to learn protocol analysis or meet Wireshark's developers, you are certainly welcome to join us there. So you can get the online version of us in the Discord channel, and you can get the offline version of us at Sharkfest, which the next one will be happening at the end of October in Portugal. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit about what's coming up with Wireshark 4.0. Uh, I'm really excited about it, and, and I, I think a lot of the other developers are too. Um, this, this release does have a lot of major changes, and uh, I really hope that Wireshark's uh, user and uh, community enjoys it as well. Same here. I hope you have a lot of fun with 4.0 and keep those interactions coming towards us with our new uh, systems like the Discord channel. We're always happy to hear from you uh, about ideas you have about the program, protocols we should support. Um, yeah, and let's get packet tracing. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye.